Hello everyone, this is Rajkumar Singh. This is second part of my lecture on a Stark effect. You have already listened to my lecture on the Stark effect up to first order correction. That was the first part of the lecture. Now we will discuss in this lecture the second part of the lecture that is discussed that is related with calculation of second order perturbation. So let's start. We'll know the quadratic dependence of energy on the electric field is known as the quadratic or nonlinear Stark effect. This nonlinear Stark effect energy correction, which is known as the energy shift, is given by second order perturbation correction term that is delta E equal to E square e square summation over nlm not equal to 1 0 0 and modulus square of this states bre nlm z cap 1 0 0 and divided by the energy difference of the two states e 1 0 0 not minus e nlm not so the polarizability in terms of energy shift delta e of the hydrogen atom placed in an electric field directed along z direction is given by alpha equals to minus 2 delta e the energy shift by e square or this alpha equals to minus 2 by e square and this whole expression is for uh, delta e as it is in the previous slide this e square cancel out with this e square and we are left with this expression for polarizability now, for the first excited state, n equal to 2, which is characterized by the energy expression E n naught equals to minus E square by 2 a naught n square electron volt. Here we have n equal to 2. So the energy difference E 1 0 0 naught and E 2 0 0 naught will be given from this expression itself. That is equal to minus E square by 2 a naught 1 square because n is 1 minus bracket minus e square by 2 a naught and bracket 2 a square because n is 2. So this turns out to be finally minus 3 e square by 8 a naught electron volt. Please uh, skip this uh, minus sign. This is erroneously here. We have used this expression for energy as discussed before. Now using this expression, uh, the polarizability becomes alpha equals to minus 2 e square. And for this all summation sign, we have this expression as we did calculation in the previous slide. And further, we get uh, calculation with denominator and the numerators. And we are left with 16 a naught by 3 and the summation term only the numerator term here and this is a standard integral which solves are to be a naught square so finally for polarizability we have 16 by 3 a naught cube now we wish to calculate the energy eigenvalues in the first excited state that is n equal to 2 for that we have to diagonalize the 4 by 4 matrix element of the perturbed Hamiltonian from the state 2 L dash M dash HP 2 LM. So here we if we should have E equal to 2 L dash M dash Z 2 LM. We need here some more specific explanation. First, we have to consider this thing that this Z does not depend on azimuthal angle phi because this z equals to r cos theta. It only depends on r and theta. Therefore, these elements 2 L dash M dash and 2 L M are non-zero only if M dash equal to M. And secondly, since this z is odd, when we change the sign of z, it becomes odd function. So, the states 2 L dash M dash and 2 L M must have opposite parities so that this does not vanish. Therefore, the only non 
vanishing matrix elements are those that couples 2s and 2p with m equal to 0 that is between the states 2 0 0 and 2 1 0 so we have the matrix elements of the perturbed hamiltonian we start with 2 0 0 and we write for all the four terms 2 0 0 2 1 1 2 1 0 2 1 minus 1 and this one for the first excited state second we have h 2 1 1 and this uh, is 2 0 0 2 1 1 2 1 0 2 1 minus 1 similarly h 2 1 0 and then the four terms 2 0 0 2 1 1 2 1 0 2 1 minus 1 and h 2 1 minus 1 2 0 0 and similarly 2 1 1 2 1 0 and 2 1 minus 1 Speci specifically we have made these two in the red color just to make it look different from the others because these two corresponds to the condition where we have m dash equal to m see we have 0 0 this is m dash this is m again this is m this is m dash and we have the stage 2 l dash and 2 l so it is 2 0 2 1 and the other side we have 2 1 and 2 0 0 so these are the two states which are the non vanishing matrix elements because they couple 2s and 2p state with m equal to 0. And from the standard calculation, this turns are to be equal to minus 3a0, both of them. So, the secular determinant which is responsible for giving the eigenvalues can be expressed like this. Others, all other terms are 0 except the red one that is minus 3a0, minus 3a0. And this uh, uh, element was 0, so it is 0 minus E1, similarly 0 minus E1, 0 minus E1. So this comes on the diagonal as we are going to determine the I, I n values. And when we solve this, we get E1 equal to 0, 0, plus 3A0 and minus 3A0. So the energy levels of n equal to 2 states are E2, 1, that is Minus 13.6 by 4, this is the un unperturbed uh, energy level. Minus 3 EEA0, this is the correction term. And E24, that is minus 13.6 by 4, again unperturbed energy value, plus the correction term 3 EEA0 electron volts. And the other two states are having zero value. So the states uh, psi21 and psi2. 1 minus 1 are not energy shifted because in this case the m values are not same it is 1 here and minus 1 here the other two states psi 2 0 0 and psi 2 1 0 are energy shifted because these are the two states uh, which corresponds to 2 s and this is 2 p for p l is 1 and for p this is a 0 2s 2p and these are the m values 0 and 0 similar m values and that's why they are energy shifted and these are given by psi plus equal to 1 by root 2 psi 2 0 0 plus psi 2 1 0 and psi minus equals to 1 by root 2 psi 2 0 0 minus psi 2 1 0 Similar to symmetric state and anti-symmetric state. As a result of this, we have three states now. Initially, we have the four states having the same energy at, suppose this was the energy and we have the four states, psi 2 0 0, psi 2 1 0, psi 2 1 1, psi 2 1 minus 1. But when electric field is applied, there is energy shift and the two levels are energy shifted, one above this line and one below this line. And we have this energy levels symbol 
multiplied by psi plus and psi minus. This positive and negative sign denotes shifting of center of center of charge distribution by an amount 3a0 along and opposite to the z direction. So this way we have calculated the energy correction terms, second order correction term as well and uh, this way we come to end of our lecture on Stark effect. Thank you so much.